Hi there. Need to raise money, but you're tired of selling popcorn, wrapping paper, and candy? The Samaritan card is a wallet-sized discount card, which can be used at more than 100,000 popular retailers. You sell the Samaritan card to raise money, fast. It's easy. When they make a donation, they save money instead of spend money. The next time you need to raise money, sell the Samaritan card and watch your donors smile. Hey everyone, welcome to another Life of Student Ministry video post. My name is Tim Schmoyer, and I already screwed it up there. Streblo. Streblo Strub is impossible to say. I, I mean, I, I I think maybe I say it wrong. <laughs> it's, it's it's one of those German names that wasn't meant to be. Schmoyer is pretty German. Yeah, uh, but you don't have the SCH in there. You no, no, S -S. it's it's just a little bit difficult, and it, it throws people off. But yeah. it's okay. You well, can the, the SCH like. threw me off until I was like twenty something. So, but anyway, <laughs> uh, Darren is a stand up comic. Maybe you guys have seen him at National uh, Youth Workers Convention or other places. Uh, he just did a great show hanging out Thanks. with us uh, that was here fun. tonight at our church. And I asked Darren to talk with us a little bit about storytelling and sharing stories. We know Jesus shared lots of stories when he taught uh, people, masses, and his disciples. And sometimes they're confusing, sometimes they weren't. I wonder if they were funny. You think any of them were kind of funny? I think they were. I, I can, I can uh, when I read uh, scriptures, see where I, I bet he got some laughter. I mean, a lot of it was serious yeah. subject matter, but there's, you know, a plank in your eye is funny, right. you know, or the camel to the eye all of the, the pictures, needle sort of thing. Yeah, all the pictures we have of Jesus, he's like, yeah, you yeah. Know, I think I, th I think but. I think uh, he was probably very fun to listen to. That's in and people enjoyed listening, and he certainly understood principles of story and storytelling yeah. very well. Right. So yeah. So how could uh, the, us as youth workers? What advice do you have for us as we teach teenagers on a pretty regular basis yeah. and incorporate stories and storytelling, both from our personal lives and other people? Um, what have you learned over how many years you've done this? Like twenty years. Uh, boy, how many? Full time uh, for uh, almost twelve years. Twelve years. So great. Yeah. So you've yeah. got plenty more experience than I do. Well, I don't know about that. I, you know, you guys are doing this on a weekly basis in front of you know uh, an audience that has heard you over and over again. I get to do you know the same routines for different people every week, so you kind of hone those stories yeah. to to uh, you know greater levels and stuff like that. It's it's harder when you have to you know, reinvent yourself every week. Yeah, like so, one shot every week. Yeah, that's, that, that's yeah. tough. Um, I, I, I guess my first uh, bit of advice is uh, uh, I think there's a tendency when you first start to try to be somebody else, you know, your favorite preacher or your yeah. favorite comedian. And that, that's good. That really helps you kind of learn uh, the process of storytelling. I think in my early stages, I, I wanted to be... Uh, Brian Regan or Bill Cosby or something, something like Dolly that. Ball. Yeah, yeah, it's one of my favorites. It's 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 fun <laughs> because you can kind of be that character. Or, or Brad Stein mentored me. I wanted to be Brad Stein, but he at one point he kind of stopped me and said, "Look, stop being me. Yeah, you know, find out what you're about." Right. So as you sort of look at your personality and your mannerisms and stuff like that, exaggerate them when you're telling your story. Be be you turned up to 11, mm. you know. Uh, it, it, uh, that could be scary. It, it, it is, it can be <laughs> kind of scary, but it's captivating. That's my job. <laughs> it, it, it's, fun, it's fun to watch somebody be kind of crazy up there. It's kind of fun to watch somebody be polished up there, but it's, it's captivating to watch somebody really be themselves mm. and be comfortable with themselves. That's, that's, that's much more interesting. Yeah. You know, be, be the person God created you to be. Now, if you're super laid back and just lethargic in real life, be super that way in real life. You'll know you're doing it right when everyone in the room is staring at you. You know, so 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 be the character that you are um, uh, to to an extreme, and and be very, very whatever you're up, up there. Be be confident. You know that that uh, you're being who you're supposed to be, and and just let that play out. And that, that doesn't happen overnight either. Yeah, yeah. You know, let do it from. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it develops over time. The more you do it, the better. And, and another thing I would advise is study principles of story. Um, a good book for um, screenwriters is A Story by Robert McKee, and he talks about uh, various storytelling principles that uh, you can bring into sermon writing, you can bring into, well, I use them in stand-up, where you're, you're structuring the funny things with the serious things or whatever, and, and you come up with a really neat story. Stories are what people want to hear and what's what they relate to. So if you understand how stories are put together, it's fascinating. It also helps you to uh, present that. Could you like 
real quickly give us kind of a, a, a typical outline of how a story will I mean I know a couple things like uh, introducing characters then climax and then you, sh you know close it up real quick after that that was that there well for stand-up you're you're really doing things in scenes uh, like you would at a movie. So when I'm talking about a funny thing, I'm bringing you into a funny situation oh, yeah, right, that yeah. will resolve itself either Hopefully from something... Comically. Com <laughs> you know, it's funny. For, for, for me, it goes to a really, a really good thing happens to me that's over the top or a really terrible thing. Yeah. You know, so it goes progressively worse till really worse or progressively mm -hmm. worse till really, really great. And it's that big turn at the end mm -hmm that makes the story interesting. Yeah. You know, this was going along here and then woof, you know. So, the wolf principle. <laughs> There's no wolf principle, but you know, the, the go, going to that the climactic ending mm -hmm. uh, for your scene is, is, is fun to listen to, you know. Uh, what about, um, like, when we use our hands, like... Uh, yeah, it's, I'm addicted that's, to it. That's kind of, well, I, yeah, I've noticed you're doing it now and that's what good, because I noticed when I start talking, I usually put my hands like in my pockets. I did that for earlier. A while. This this is how I did like my early routines, just like this. <laughs> Isn't that fun to look at? <laughs> for about thirty seconds. Yeah. Uh, the more, and, and again, this goes back to who you are as a person, as a character in real life. If you tend to talk with your hands, use it. You know, sure. just be casting spells on people in the front row, in the back. Uh, you, use your hands. But if you're not, you know, just. There's, some, there's nothing more awkward than watching a person who doesn't know how to use their hands try to use their hands. Yeah. It, it just looks yeah. like... Yeah. Like if you have to, or if, if you're, if you're nervous, play with something for a little bit and then go back to just I putting do that it on I always got, I got a pen in my yeah, hand. Yeah, do that for a couple seconds. I used to have a professor in college who every once in a while during his lecture would go over to a piano and go... Di -li -li -li, and then walk back and do this kind of stuff. It made it interesting. I don't know why. <laughs> Bring a piano so, with you wherever you go. We used to use uh, like the little um, uh, magnets, you know, like when I would teach just a small group of boys, they're always like touching stuff and feeling <laughs> things and throwing stuff at each other. And then um, we always had drinks, so they were throwing ice cubes, you know, whatever. So we actually took a, um, uh, this has nothing to do with storytelling, but it worked for us. <laughs> we took a whole bunch of magnets, plopped them on the table, and they built stuff and just played the entire stuff the, the entire time. And they were totally attentive. And it was like, it was like magic. It was awesome. Yeah, so yeah. we kept Magnus, uh, um, Play-Doh, and stuff yeah, like If that. you can use props effectively, that's, that's, that's fun too. It, it, you know, but it, it's almost more fun when you're not using props because you, the imagination, you can make a prop out of the imagination. Yeah. So anything you're talking about is sort of coming into the room. So yeah. you know, there's, there's lots of ways to, to do it. But cool. uh, mainly be yourself yeah. and, and, and use, don't be afraid to be who you are up yeah. there. Because that's more captivating. You got to figure out who you are first. That's the yeah, and it takes a while, but yeah. it's it's worth that discovery. The other thing uh, I would ask is uh, when we tell stories, uh, how much detail should we give to paint the scene that we're creating in <clears> Cleveland, <throat> and how much do we let them fill in the gaps? You know, like because you could spend you have, a lot of time doing. That. Yeah, I find you only want to draw attention to details that are actually seminal to the story. Okay. Because. The rest of it, they'll fill in, you know. Um, I went to the dollar store. They already have a picture of that. Okay. You yeah. just want to talk about what you got there, you know, how much did it cost? <laughs> Stuff like that. The um, dollar store is not just a bucket. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. But, uh, you know, uh, let them fill in a lot of the blanks. But, um, you know, detail is fun if it actually affects your story. Right. Um, uh, That's good because sometimes I like I fill in like too much emotion of like what I was feeling, and well, I see I, like know, there's this lady over there or whatever, and it's like. Oh, you know, that's whatever. that's that's that brings up a good point because sometimes detail is is fun just for the detail. Yeah. You know, this was this. Well, that's interesting, and the humor is the same way. When you add humorous elements to your stories, if they're funny, keep them. I mean, even if they're not really adding weight to your argument or whatever that is. funny is funny and, and that's another principle that uh, McKee teaches in his story you know sometimes it's just funny for the sake of being funny yep. details for the sake of details I was wearing this bizarre outfit during whatever you know <laughs> that's interesting uh, keep that in there for, for interest but as far as just you don't have to be their imagination for the most yeah. part just just point out stuff and they'll fill in the blanks yeah
Cool. Well, thank you for your time. Oh, yeah. Appreciate and, you hanging uh, out with blessings us. Blessings on what you guys do. It, it's hard. Like you said, you know, you're doing the same uh, group every, you know, you know, presenting to the same group. That's very hard. Uh, but the more genuine you are and the more the more you you are, I, th I think that's going to keep them listening. And, you know, wh what's he going to say? What's she going to say this week? I yeah. think that's... That's the, the most important thing. Especially when you use life stories. You know, oh, things, absolutely. The from your, I mean, everyone, when you talk about your childhood or whatever, yeah. say, we all care about that a lot more because we care about you more than if you're telling, oh, a friend of mine, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and same when teenagers are listening to us. They care much more about our stories than something you got out of some illustration oh, book yeah. or an email forward you got earlier that week. You know, if it fits, if it fits, you can use it. But I try to use personal stories at least once. And every, every message. They should feel like they know you a little better after your presentation. Yeah. And I think you'll know you're doing a good job when they feel that way. And hopefully respect you a little bit. Alex. Yeah. <laughs> good luck with that. That's a good story you can tell. Yeah. That's the opposite. But anyway, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us for another Life in Two Ministry video post. We'll see you guys soon.